Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing 23andMe stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. 23andMe is a genomics and biotech company. It is best known for providing genetic test results to customers that provide the company a saliva sample that is analyzed in a laboratory to generate reports relating to the customer's ancestry and genetic predispositions. The company's name comes from the fact that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes in a human cell. Since 2014, it has offered its services to people in Canada and the UK. It has provided 11.6 million people with their genetic test results. The more people that use the service, the more accurate the data becomes. The company's saliva-based testing kit was named Invention of the Year by Time Magazine. When you use this company's service, you will be able to accurately identify your family's medical history so you can be proactive and try to fix a medical issue before it occurs. Since it has such a large amount of data, it started to develop drugs through its partnership with GlaxoSmithKline. One of its drugs is in phase one clinical trials, and they have several drugs in preclinical stages. Its drug pipeline has grown from five drugs in 2019 to nine in 2020, up to 19 currently. 80% of the people who order a DNA test from the company opt into sharing their genetic information for disease research and development. Having so much information can be a breakthrough to helping people get healthier. And since they have a large population of people, they can hone in on certain demographics, certain nationalities, because some diseases are more prevalent with certain backgrounds. Because once they develop these drugs, they'll also be able to know who to market to since they'll know which community of people is more likely to have a disease. This company was funded by a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company is formed to raise money through an IPO, then acquire a private business to help them go public. This is also known as a reverse merger or reverse takeover. In June of this year, the merger was completed and 23andMe received $600 million in cash proceeds. The SPAC that acquired 23andMe was VG Acquisition Corp. This is Richard Branson's company. Richard Branson is the owner of Virgin Group. The company is headquartered in Sunnyvale, California and was founded in 2006. It trades on the NASDAQ. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 4.8 billion market cap. They're trading at 11.72 a share and they have 407 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that grew from 192 million to 237 million. All these numbers are estimates because I don't have their full year's financials. I just have the second quarter of 2020 versus the second quarter of 2021. So to get their full year revenue, I just multiplied the quarter by four. So all the numbers are an estimate. This is the company's income statement. This is comparing the second quarter of 2021 to the second quarter of 2020. But the top line is the revenue and they had 59 million in the second quarter compared to 48 million from the same period last year. Here's a breakdown of their revenue. 48 million of the 59 million is from people like me and you who order the test kits, spit into the tube and get our results. 11 million is from big pharma companies who pay to get the data from this company. I think all their revenue comes from GlaxoSmithKline in this category. And here's a breakdown of their revenue by country. And two thirds of their revenue is in the US the reason their revenue is so high in the UK is because 11 million is from GlaxoSmithKline. The rest is from their retail customers. Then they have 3.2 million in Canada and 1.7 million in other. The great thing about this company is it's really scalable. They can sell their products all over the world with minimal costs. 
Below revenue is cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The cost to prepare the kits, the cost to mail them out, also the payroll costs, the cost to the scientists for analyzing the DNA. That's all part of cost of revenue. And revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that was 31 million in the second quarter, 22 million last year. They spend a lot in research and development, 44 million. 15 million in sales and marketing. They're probably gonna need to advertise a lot to get their name out there. And 13 million in general and administrative expenses. So they have negative operating income each quarter. But I do expect it will take time for this company to become profitable. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with their net loss, then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. You also have to adjust for changes in working capital. So they spent $9 million in inventory, so that was a cash outflow. $7 million in accounts receivables, so they extend credit to their customers. And they have negative $5.2 million of deferred revenue. So customers usually pay up front for a test kit, and the company doesn't book the revenue until they analyze the DNA and send the results. So they keep the revenue on their balance sheet as a liability in unearned revenue. Once they actually send the results to the customer, which could be a month after they receive payment, then they pull the amount off of deferred revenue and put it onto the income statement as revenue. The way I calculated their free cash flow, I took operating cash flow minus CapEx, and I multiplied that by four, since this is just for one quarter. They spent 3.5 million in CapEx in the second quarter of last year. CapEx is investments in property, plant, and equipment. So they may have to buy expensive equipment to analyze the DNA. So when they buy that equipment, they put it onto the balance sheet and depreciate it over the useful life of that asset. But when you initially buy the asset, the entire cost is put onto the statement of cash flows in the cash flow from financing section. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They raised 1.7 billion from selling their business and they lost 1 billion from running their business. So they have 662 million of equity. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 663 million of equity, 91 million of debt. So they're 88% equity, 12% debt. They could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have 679 million of cash left over. And I gave them the middle whack on Finbox of 8%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated six years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year six, that's five billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $3.2 billion. We divide that by 407 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 781. They're trading at 1172, so they're trading at a 50% premium. It's a sell according to the model. The company projects their 2022 revenue to be between 250 and 260 million dollars. So I gave them 260 million of revenue in 2022. The average analyst projects their revenue to increase 14.9%. So I grew at 14.9% for the next two years. Then I grew at 50% for the next three years. Because I believe once they get more data, the company will be more valuable because they can sell that data to the big pharmaceutical companies who can develop drugs for their customers. And to get their future free cash flows, I needed to figure out what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. So I looked at similar companies and it looks like they were around 23% of their revenue was converted to free cash flow. So I just multiplied their revenue by 23% for 25, 26, and 27. And I figured they would have negative free cash flow up through 2024. But I'm still coming out of the stock price a lot lower than they're trading at. Two analysts priced this stock and the average price target was 1250. This is where the stock has been trading the past 12 months. When a SPAC mentions they have an acquisition target, then the stock price usually goes up pretty quickly. And then there's a big sell-off and it usually doesn't recover back to that point. Maybe it will in the future. And the actual merger didn't happen till this date. So people buy the stock way before the merger is completed. So you can't wait for the merger to happen because the stock is already priced way down. In the past 52 weeks, the stock is up 18% while the S&P 500 is up 39%. The 52-week low was 7, the high was 18. 
And it is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. Over 4 million shares have been traded on average the past 10 days. 63% of the shares are held by institutions and 3% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 when the SPAC started trading, you'd be at $10,000 today. The CEO of 23andMe owns 24% of the stock. Then GlaxoSmithKline owns 10%, Fidelity, G Squared, and Sequoia. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE since they have negative net income. Their price of sales is a bit high at 20, so investors are paying $20 for $1 revenue. The market median is 2.9. Price to book is also a little high at 7.2. They have a high current ratio of 6.6 .6 and a high quick ratio of 6.5. They have a ton of cash on their balance sheet, 770 million. A lot of it is from the recent IPO. It seems like they do burn through a lot of cash, but they have a good amount of working capital, so they should have enough cash to get through the next three years. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry, I've done videos of six companies in the same industry as me, and if me has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So we can't look at their PE. Their price to sales and price to book are a lot better than the average, because the average is so poor in this industry. Only one company in this industry has positive earnings. They have a high current ratio, but it is below average. They don't have a good ROE, but it is better than average since the average is so bad. They're low in debt and they're 5 billion market cap. The average is 13 billion because Illumina is so big. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 50% premium, but I think this company has great potential. They can scale their business with the retail market, selling to people like me and you, and they could sell the information to biotech companies. So both of those sources can be huge one day. But I think it may take many years to get there. And I do feel they're a bit overvalued at this point. I think the price should come down. But you never know if a stock price will come down. Even if you think it's overvalued like Tesla, it might just keep going up. I rank their free cash flow as 1 out of 10, their revenue 5 out of 10, and their ratio 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.